so is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body. It does what? It defiles the whole body. Your mouth and how you speak is what defiles you as a person. Like Christ said, it's not what it's not that which goes into a man that defiles a man. It's what comes out. It's how you talk to other people. It's how you operate amongst other people. That's what makes you the type of person that you are. And and this is why we don't we don't come out cursing out other people or demeaning other people or anything in that nature. We don't deal with that. And the reason I stress that is because when people see a group of guys out with a Bible in their hand and a microphone, they like to ascribe us to other groups. And we are not like that. And it's imperative that we touch on that because actions like that is what prevent people from getting the word now. If you talk to you know, in a certain way, a certain demographic of people won't listen to you. And that's why it's important we, we stress that, that topic. Read that part again. James chapter 3, verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defiles the whole body and set it on fire in the course of nature and is set on fire of hell it's set on fire of what? and is set on fire of hell for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tame and have been tame of mankind but the tongue can no man tame the, your tongue cannot be um, controlled Your, the way you talk amongst other people is, is what's destroying you spiritually. Especially if all you know to do is backbite and curse out other people. We're not supposed to operate like that. Especially if it's your brother. We're supposed to show love amongst our people. That's number one. That's one thing America don't teach you. Read verse 9 for me. James chapter 3, verse 9. Dear wit, bless we God. The same mouth that we blessing and thanking God. I love you, Jesus. Read. Even the Father. And therewith curse men. Excuse me. And therewith curse we men. Is, this, is that same mouth that you cursing your next, the next man. And like I said, I see it all the time, man. And, and y'all know what I'm talking about. Because a lot, a, a lot, a lot of y'all do it. Let's be for real. Here and there, you'll curse out a certain person for something that they did to you. But that same mouth you're using to curse that man should not be that same mouth you're using to ask God for forgiveness. Because the same way you treat that brother, if you didn't forgive him for whatever reason, the same way the Most High going to look at you if you want to ask for forgiveness. That's why the Bible says that's the same measurement you, you, you forgive a man is the same measurement the Most High will forgive you. So if you don't forgive the next brother, how you expect the Most High to forgive you? And you trespass against the Most High on a daily basis. Number one, we are not keeping His laws. Read that part again. James chapter 3 verse 9 Therewith, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith, curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. We should not be doing that. Especially if you claim you love in God. Matter of fact, give me 1 John 4 and 20. Especially if you claim you love the Most High. How are you going to claim you love your Jesus but you're cursing out your brother? you hating your brother. That doesn't make any sense. Read that for me. 1 John chapter 4 verse 20. If a man say, I love God. 
Oh, I love God. I love Jesus. Any man say he loves God, read. And hated his brother. And you hate your brother. I'm talking about your neighbor. The people you see walking down your street on a daily basis. Your people. Anybody who say they love God, they love Jesus, and you hate your brother, read. He's a liar. He's a what? He's a liar. You're lying. Why? Read. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen. If you don't love your own brother which you see, right? How can he love God whom he has not seen? How are you going to claim you love the Father and you have not seen him? It makes you a liar. If you gonna love, if you claim you love God, love your brother. He's made in, in the Father's image as well. Hey, man, no Believe in God?
James chapter 3. Like I was saying, we have to we have to operate amongst brothers in an orderly fashion because we are the same people. And it's it's not us to be coming down on, on each other the way we do. Especially if we claim we love in God. I was on first John 4 and 2. You know, I like that scripture because that scripture is the truth. As much as we claim we love the Father, we have to we have to show that same love amongst our people. The Bible says, "Love your neighbor the way you love yourself." Yeah. Okay, read that from First John four. First John chapter four verse twenty. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can, how can, you, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? So if you, if you claim you love God who you have not seen, how can you not show that same love to your brother who you see every day? Nothing is wrong with helping out another person. Nothing is wrong with showing care amongst your, your people. Nothing is wrong with that. It don't make you weak. It don't make you docile. It makes you a brother. Nothing is wrong with being a brother or a sister. I'm, I'm, the reason I'm touching on love is because we like to talk about love so much. But you think love is a feeling. For example, if I say I love my woman and I'm beating her every, every night, does that mean I love my woman? No, it doesn't. Love is not a feeling. Love is an action. If you, if you love somebody, you show it to them. You show that person you love them. You don't tell them you love them and then do the opposite. For example, if you claim you love God, show Him. The way you show you love God is to keep His commandments. They are not grievous. It's, it's easy. So if you claim you love your brother, be there for your brother or your sister. It's that simple. Read. Romans chapter 13 verse 8 Owe no man anything but to love one another You don't owe no man anything The only thing you owe your brother is to love you or your sister Read. For he that loved for lover has fulfilled the law And that's all you need to do to fulfill the law so you claim the law done away with. When you're missing the key important thing that you talk about every Sunday is love. That's the law. To love the next person is the law. That's how you fulfill it. Read. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. If you love your brother, you will not commit adultery. You will not sleep with your brother's wife. That's one way how you show you love your brother, read. Thou should not kill. If you love your brother, you will not kill your brother.
Thou shalt not bear false witness. Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Owe no man anything. You don't owe no man anything. Read. But to love one another. That's all you owe the next man or the next woman. Your brother and your sister. It's a love one. And like I said, nothing is wrong with loving your brother. Showing you love your people. And we show and we love you. Because little do you know what we're doing out here is illegal. This, this, this can cost us our life. And it's definitely something worth dying for. Because Christ did it. Christ loved his people to die for, for them. And like he said, there's no greater love than a, a, a man that will die for his friend. Or lay his life down for his friend. That's a brother. Read. For he that love for another has fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. If you love your brother, you would not kill your brother. And this would this don't only have to mean a physical killing. Let me show you that. Read that for me. First John chapter 3, verse 15. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Read it again. Whoso hateth his brother is a murderer. So even if you hate your brother, you still killing that brother. Why is that? Because that hatred you have for your brother, you have no idea what that can cause that, that next person. It can even be spiritual. You killing that brother for hating that brother. The way you will operate amongst that brother. Read it again. 1 John chapter 3 verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So even if you hate your brother, you're not seeing the kingdom. Because that's still murdering your brother. And if you love your brother, you will not murder him. Read. Thou shalt not steal. If you love your brother, you will not steal from your brother. Read. Thou shalt not bear his false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Read that again. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. That means nothing is wrong with loving your people. And you know what? I think if we had known who we are, we can probably show more love towards each other. And that's why it's imperative that we point out that we are the real children of Israel. That we are the people who walk through the Red Sea. We are those people who, are, who once inherited the land of Canaan. That's us. The children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's us. The so-called Negroes. Who were brought here to the Americas. In slave ships. Y'all from the tribe of, of Judah. The so-called Caribbeans, whether it be Trinidad, Grenada, Jamaica, you are from the tribe of Benjamin. The so-called Haitians, so-called Haitians, you are from the tribe of Levi. And it's not, it's not a black thing either, the Hispanics, Puerto Ricans, they're from the tribe of Ephraim, we are the same people. And like I said, it's imperative that we point this out. Once we come back together as a people, we can't be stopped. And that's what they're afraid of. And that's why they separate us and compartmentalize us into these different groups, whether it be religious or nationality. We are the same people. The Cubans, they're from the tribe of Manasseh. The same people. The Native American Indians from the tribe of Gad, we are the same people. The Dominicans, the tribe of Simeon, we are the same people. And once we know who we are, we can start coming together. Because that will never happen under religion 
It will never happen under politics. It will never happen under these slave names that we have attached to us. We will never come together unless we know who we are. And that's why we point that out. It's not for separatism either. We are the children of Israel. And it's time we wake up. And don't think your government don't know who you are. That's exactly why they know how to destroy you. Why is it only us that dies through diabetes, heart, heart failure, hypertension? Why is it us? Why do they know to put the, the fast food now in our restaurants? How do they know how to euthanize us through vaccination? How do they know to give, a, to give us plant parenthood? To have our women thinking it's okay to abort your baby? How do they know that? They know who we are. And they're, and they're doing the same thing they did to us back in Egypt during the time of Moses. When they seen that our people were populating. What was their plan? Be populated kill the man child. Same thing they did during crisis time. Don't y'all see the pattern? They trying to kill us. They know who we are. So they give us the drugs. They give us, they give each other guns. They give us these sorcerers that they call, they call doctors. They give us food that's contaminated. They sprayed our, our atmosphere with chemtrails. They are trying to kill us. And since everybody in America is high and drunk, we have no idea what's going on. We are oblivious to who our, our um, enemy is. And it's the same government that you trust. And don't think they're not watching us. They, they babysitting us, trust me. They got us, they got surveillance all over. They got police every every minute walking on the block. Why is that? Why are they watching us so closely? They know who we are, but you have no idea. And we seem like we conspiracy theorists or whatever when we point these things out. And we wrong and we and we so-called dealing with hatred when pointing out who the enemy is. And the enemy is not the person that's walking amongst you. That's not the enemy. The enemy is the one that you would not expect it to be. And that's your government. They are planning a mass depopulation amongst us. And it's time we wake up and realize what time we in. Get me, drop everything you got. Get me Jeremiah 30 and 7. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 Alas for that day is great so that none is like it and a day is coming a day is coming that none of us has, has ever witnessed read it is even the time of Jacob's trouble it's what? it is even the time of Jacob's trouble and that's the time we're in. We are Jacob. We are the children of Jacob. And that's why we point out who we are. 
Because if we don't know who we are, we will not know it's our trouble. The things that we are about to witness here in America, that has never been witnessed. And this is why it's best, like, like the Bible says, it's time for us to make a move out of here. And me and my brothers, we leave and we out. We are in Jacob's trouble. We are going through it right now. But they give us all these different entertainments so we can try to act like it don't, it, it, it don't exist. But we are going through it. And one day we're going to feel it harder than it is. And yet again. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. We are currently in our trouble, folks. And this is why the Most High is calling us back. We have to start coming back to the Father, coming back to the Lord. Because without that, without the Father being our refuge, it's a wrap for us. And real soon a lot of our people are going to be dying. In a large number. And it's not to scare nobody, it's to be prepared. The Bible says, wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of the time. If you have no idea what's going on, ain't no way you can prepare for it. And that trouble that we're going to go through, we must go through it. We must go through it. So nobody's getting raptured off. Nobody's getting, getting picked up into the heavens. It's not going to happen. Whatever trouble comes here, you're going to have to face it, one way or another. And this is why we, we are warning you. Whether you take heed to it or not, you're going to go through it. But we must prepare. And that's why awareness is number one. We have to be aware about, we have to be aware of what's going on. Because if we don't, we can easily get caught up. And that's why we, we, no matter what, man, we try our best to come out and shake our people loose. But just like in the days of Noah, he preached for 120, 120 years, telling people it's going to rain. But what they did, they walked by and paid no attention. And that's exactly what we're doing now. We're telling y'all it's going to rain, man. Something is coming that you are not aware of, that you are not prepared for. And Christ said, just as in the days of Noah, so shall his coming be. Then you're going to see brothers preaching, telling you something is coming. But you're going to walk by, you're going to ignore it, you're going to go, go on with your daily life until it rains, and rains, and rains. And that's what's going to be that last minute. And that's when it's going to hit you. Just like the days of Noah. The brother preached for 120 years. People screwed his face just like they're doing to us now. People twist their lip to him the way they're doing to us now. They call them crazy the way they do to us now un until that day when it finally rained. And when that rain come here in America, then you're going to realize these crazy brothers that you've seen were speaking some truth. That's when you would know the most high was amongst you. And, and believe me, what's, set, what's being set out this Bible is coming. And that rain we're talking about that's coming is, is the destruction of America. It's coming. And I mean, it's coming. What they plan to do to you, children of Israel, it's coming. But those who link in with the Most High and take heed to His Word are those going to be